Really happy here at Heal Thyself to partner with Ned. It's to this point, one of my favorite supplements that I've been using, particularly for sleep. When summer comes, I'm usually way more active running around, even staying up late sometimes. So what I find is that every single time I'm leaving the house and I'm packing my bag, I'm always bringing the Ned sleep formula. One of the worst things for me is when I'm sleeping, I wake up so easily to every single sound. The sleep blend is a natural path to steady, consistent, deep sleeping, and I'm waking up feeling really good, refreshed, rejuvenated, and ready to go. But the reason it's so effective is because it blends to the CBN, which is a powerful cannabinoid that promotes sleep and has 750 milligrams of CBD, and it's made from the world's purest single source, full spectrum hemp oil. And you know, we have an endocannabinoid system in our body, which responds to these cannabinoids. 750 milligrams is a dose that really works for me to put me to sleep, keep me asleep through the night. So if you or someone you love is having sleep issues, have them try out the Net Sleep Bend. It's one of the best things out there. It's safe, holistic, third-party tested, super transparent sleep aid. As a give back to the Heal Thyself listener, you're going to receive 50% off of your first purchase and 20% off of your first membership purchase. Memberships are amazing. They offer great perks. It's going to include 15% off of every single purchase. So go to helloned.com slash drg and enter the code DRG at checkout. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D dot com slash DRG. You're going to get 15% off of your first one-time order and 20% off of your first subscription order plus free shipping. Thank you, Ned. I mentioned before the Aura Organic is one of my favorite brands that I've been using. I've been using them for years. If you've been following me, you know that I've been putting them in my stories for many years. Aura Organic is a very special company because they're super transparent, super clean, and they use high quality ingredients. The product that I wanna to talk to you today about is the Aloe Gorgeous Formula. It's a plant-based collagen boosting powder. So there's two different types of collagen powders. There's one that has the precursors to collagen and one that use collagen peptides. Both are helpful, but I prefer the precursors because collagen peptides are not always necessarily used for what we want. And what we want in particular is for our skin health. When it comes to the precursors, we're utilizing and giving the body what it needs to produce collagen, which is so important. This powder, the Aloe Gorgeous, has vitamin C, as well as different protein precursors that support collagen production as well as synthesis, so you're creating new collagen as well. One of my favorite things about the Aloe Gorgeous is that it's certified organic and vegan, so it's kinder and more humane versus other traditional collagen peptides. It also contains silica from bamboo, which is a super important mineral to help with the integrity of collagen in the skin and it's natural. So I use Aloe Gorgeous as part of my morning smoothie. I've been using it for the past three months. My skin looks great. You can find Aura Organic at Ulta, Whole Foods, a vitamin shop, but you can also shop online at www.aura.organic. That's www.ora.organic. Use the code Heal Thyself at checkout for 10% off of your next purchase. All right, everyone, thank you for joining Heal Thyself for another week. So much gratitude and appreciation for taking the time out of your day to join the show. What a great show that we have coming today. Summer's here, and we all want to, quote unquote, protect ourselves from the sun. So today I'm going to go over what is some of the controversy that we see in conventional sunblocks and sunscreens. And I'm also going to go over my favorites and which ones to stay away from. We also have a very special guest. If you remember, we had Dr. Will Cole come here and talk to us about so many important aspects and approaches and interventions to your overall health. Well, we have the, the source, the main source, his dad. His dad is here, and he's going to talk to us about cellular health, detoxification, environmental chemicals, resistant weight loss, gut health, everything under the sun to ensure that we're doing the right thing to keep our bodies as healthy as they can be. So... Without further ado, let's get to this knowledge bomb. All right, summer is here, summer, summer. This is my favorite by far. It's my favorite season. You know, I love being hot. I love the sun. I love shorts. I love tans. I love getting on my bike, going to the beach, putting my feet on the beach. I love walking by the ocean. I love beach sports. I love it all. Summer is my favorite. And I'm fired up because I think it's going to be a hot one. So, Today, I'm going to talk about sunscreen. In this Knowledge Bomb segment, I want you to bring all your attention that not all sunscreens that are out there are created equal. Okay, you may know that already, but I want to bring your attention some of the newest research on how the poor quality ingredients that are in your sunscreen that you've been using 
or plan on using this summer can be affecting your health. Now I want to point this out. The sun is not necessarily the problem. It's our environment that affects it. And you go back to my episode about all about sun. I went deep into really, it's not the sun that's necessarily the problem. It's the environment, the internal environment that is affecting our overall health. And you must remember, UV intensity varies throughout the day. For example, for sunrise, you're gonna be exposed to minimal UV, and you know that, you feel that. Whereas you're gonna get a stronger dose in the midday sun, 10 to 2 a.m., but you're gonna get most of the vitamin D then. When I recommend sun, I recommend exposing yourself and the maximum amount of skin surface area for about 20 to 30 minutes, right? Depending on how dark your skin is, you're gonna need more sun, but you wanna avoid burning. You always wanna avoid burning. So when the body's antioxidant system is not working correctly, you're not necessarily quenching those oxidants that are caused by the sun. But if you have an abundance of antioxidants in your body, then they're negating and balancing those reactive oxidant species. So it's not the sun, it's the defense mechanisms that you've built for yourself and or lack of that is affecting you and making the sun an issue. So uh, some of them are the byproducts that the reactive oxygen species that are created, the oxidants. Some of them are byproducts, a very natural process in the body. Sometimes it's not just the sun. Sometimes it's just natural processes. But yes, the sun can damage, the sun can burn, but remember, it's an unhealthy body that is antioxidant depleted that really pushes this. So Essentially what happens is the protective mechanism is down, your cells, your skin cells, particularly the membrane is affected, the DNA is damaged, mitochondrial DNA is damaged, lipid proteins, enzymes are dysfunctioning, and then we have issues, right? But if we have the antioxidants, they're balancing out and protecting us. So remember, even in this 2021 sunscreen show, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the utmost importance of antioxidants first. All right, let's move on. What's the problem with conventional sunscreens? Well, for starters, the government is inadequate at putting out safe and even effective sunscreens. The Environmental Working Group did a nice report on sunscreens, and essentially they say, SPF, whatever number you see on the bottle, the chances are it's much lower. And really quick, what is SPF? SPF is the measure of how much solar energy, UV radiation, is required to produce sunburn on protected skin. Now, according to the FDA, in addition to solar intensity, there are a number of factors that influence the amount of solar energy that a consumer is exposed to. That skin type, remember, the darker the skin, the more sun you need just for vitamin D, right? But then if you have more fair skin, you're more easily burned. The amount of sunscreen that's applied, reapplication frequency, especially if you're going in the water or the pool, and what chemicals are in them. So the Environmental Working Group did an investigation they said, and when they concluded it, just about three quarters or more than the 1,800 products that they went over were evaluated in their guide, did not, do not provide adequate sun protection or included ingredients linked to, linked to harmful effects in the human body. And that's incredible because we slather our children, our infants, our toddlers in sunscreen. We slather ourselves, especially if we're out working all day. So we really need to bring to the forefront what are the chemicals in sunscreen and how do we optimize our overall health by choosing better products? Additionally, the Environmental Working Group, they explained this. In 2019, the FDA submitted a proposal for updating sunscreen regulations, recognizing just two, just two ingredients as safe and effective. That's zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The problem is in the other ingredients. There are multiple chemicals found in sunscreen that are harmful to human health. In the same 2019 proposal that I mentioned by the FDA, they mentioned that 12 of the active ingredients commonly found in sunscreens, including oxybenzone, need additional data from safety and efficacy tests. And those ingredients that I mentioned are used in more than 60% of the sunscreens out there, which is incredible, right? So chances are, over 50% that you're going to choose a sunscreen that has chemicals that the FDA is admitting are not tested properly for safety and efficacy. That's incredible. So essentially, we do not have enough data on these chemicals. Avobenzone, oxybenzone, which is the first most common UV filter, octinozate, which is the second most common UV filter, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. And we don't know how safe they are. And on the contrary, we're starting to see that they have harmful effects on the body. Oxybenzone is the most popular chemical, as I mentioned, the, the most common UV filter. 
and it's readily absorbed through the skin. And the CDC, their fourth national report on human exposure to environmental chemicals, demonstrated that approximately 97% of people have tested for oxybenzone in their urine. And it's not just coming from sunscreen, it's also in personal care products. But oxybenzone is a chemical that we're starting to see is a nasty one. It's been detected also in human breast milk, amniotic fluid, urine, and blood. So in humans, oxybenzone has been reported to produce contact and photocontact allergy reactions. So if you've ever been allergic to a particular sunscreen or itchy or getting a rash, the chances are it's the oxybenzone reacting. Uh, but it's also implicated as a possible possible endocrine disruptor, meaning hormone disruptor, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, thyroid, all of the hormones that are floating around in our body that are giving our organs signals on what to do can be disrupted. We also see it, that it's been linked to Hirschsprung's disease, which is a bowel disease, which causes constipation. It's also believed to affect the thyroid, super important in metabolism, right? It is the it is the heat center of our body. I think of it like the thermometer of the house. Test Testosterone levels, super important as we get older, us men and women. Kidney function, pubertal timing, breast cancer, and endometriosis. These are all hormone disorders aside from the kidney function one. These are hormone disorders that are pushed. So we've already believed for years that oxybenzone disrupts your hormones, but now we're starting to see that it does have an effect on the way that our hormones are working and causing diseases that are tied to hormone dysfunction. Children, of course, may be more vulnerable than adults to harm from oxybenzone because of the potential for higher absorption and bioaccumulation. And if that wasn't enough, oxybenzone can also react with chlorine. Chlorine, think about it. We put on sunscreen, we jump in a chlorinated pool, oxybenzone has been has been found to react with chlorine and guess what it's producing hazardous byproducts to the human health that can be concentrated in swimming pools it's incredible right so and this was a few years ago i put a post about this but to think that the combination we never think that who thinks about that the combination of the sunscreen and the chlorine but we do now know that there's effects on the body that are negative to our overall health environmentally Oxybenzone has been shown to produce a variety of toxic reactions in coral and fish, ranging from reef bleaching to mortality overall, right? It's killing coral, it's killing fish. It's banned in Hawaii, it's banned in Key West due to the knowing of what it does to the environment and human health. So if you're home, I'm gonna challenge you. Go to your cabinet, go to your pantry, go to your closet, wherever you keep the sunscreen and see if it has oxy benzone, O-X-Y-B-E-N-Z-O-N-E, or if it has the suffix of anything, benzone. And if it does, put it in the garbage, throw it away. And as a matter of fact, throw it away and tag me, right? I want to see it, tag me, I'll repost it. And let's start a little movement of throwing away some crappy sunscreen. Now you may ask which one are good ones? Which one should I be getting for me and my kids? Well, let's go to the product review and find out. All right, so here are some of the sunscreens that contain the aforementioned chemicals of concern. And at this point, I would highly recommend that you keep away from you and your children. Sunbum, Neutrogena, Elta MD, Derm Store, Supergoop, Paula's Choice, Supergoop Glow Screen, PCA Skin Daily Defense, Banana Boat, really popular one right there, CVS Health, another popular one, Copper Tone, I've used that one before in my life, Neutrogena, Beach Defense, Hawaiian Tropic, one of the most popular ones. I've definitely used that one. Now, here are the other brands that don't have those aforementioned chemicals from the Knowledge Bomb segment, but they do have some ingredients or inactive ingredients that are questionable. La Roche, CeraVe, Liquid Formula, ISDIN, ISDIN, and Blue Lizard. Now, here are the sunscreens that are so-so. They're on the way to being pretty good. If you have these, then I wouldn't freak out. I, you can use the bottle, but I would actually go to the better or the best of the best ones that I'm gonna name. Native, My Shell, Beauty Counter, and Kinfield. And now here are the better and best. So if you have any of these, you can keep these. Of course, always strive for the best, but here are some of the better ones. The Kinship, Avocado Zinc, Alba Botanical Mineral Spray. So here are some of the top sunscreens. Think Sport Everyday Face, Baby Bum Mineral Sunscreen. Now the best of the best, the ones to strive for, my top 2021 sunscreens. Badger, which I mentioned in the past as being one of the top ones, it still is. 
Babo Botanicals, baby, and All Good, and Viva IO Days. Those are my favorite ones for 2021. If you don't have these, don't freak out. If you have any of the ones that are so-so or questionable, all right, use the bottle, throw them away, but definitely strive for the best and the best of the best, okay? If you did not hear about your favorite sunscreens, go to Environmental Working Group website. They have a really nice 2021 yearly sunscreen guide, and it's comprehensive, and they go over a lot of these formulas that you can buy online. Most of the ones that I mentioned are at local stores and common over the counter, so uh, you can use that as another resource if I didn't mention any of them. So I really hope that helped. Super excited to talk to Dr. Bill Cole. He is so knowledgeable in detoxification and cellular health, and he's going to let us know the best ways that we can detoxify our body. Let's get to that convo. All right, everyone, today's special guest, Dr. Bill Cole. He's been at this for 37 years. He is an expert in cellular health inflammation, gut health, environmental stresses, all the things that I'm talking about on this show. Now I have someone who's really speaking my language. Welcome to the show, Doc. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Love being here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I said Dr. Bill Cole. For those listeners and viewers who've been, who've been listening intently, they know that I've had a Dr. Will Cole. Now there's a relation here. There's a relation here, right? That's right. He's my oldest. He's the oldest. Okay. And, and little do they know, before we got on air, you told me you taught him everything he knows. <laughs> That's what I like to say anyway. <laughs> so amazing. So he, so he was fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to this convo. Man, thir- 37 years. You, you, you're, back then, no one was talking about really functional, naturopathic, integrative medicine. You must have been a big time outlier back then. Yeah. I mean, even but he, when I look back on it, Doc, it was... I thought I was doing things that were really at that building block foundational level, but I really wasn't. I was, we were sort of doing the same thing that, uh, you know, all, allopathy does, which is we were treating symptoms, but it was more natural, if you will. But I mean, there's right. advantages to that, but we're, we were still not getting to that root cause of why so many people are sick. Mm-hmm. And so, so, so 37 years ago, you're treating naturally, right? But also symptom management. At what point did you go... You know, I'm given all of these really healthy natural supplements or agents, and people are kind of getting better. Where did you go? No, I need I need to get to the root. What what's going on? Can I tell you a story? It, it, it really, we, do we have to? Yeah. Yeah, it impacted me big time. Um, I was in partnership with one of my best friends. This guy, uh, we, you know, we had one of the largest chiropractic clinics in the state of Pennsylvania, and everything was going well, and we were busy and enjoying life. And then this guy who was this picture of health, his name's Dan. Um, national level mountain bike competitor, fittest of the fit. He walked the walk. He didn't just talk it right. And he just wound up getting sick. He first started noticing training for an event that he just ran out of energy and um, things progressed from there. And over uh, just to make a long story short, over a four year period, this guy who was a health expert himself tried everything that he could to get his health back. And not only did he not get his health back, he watched himself go downhill for four years to where he became bedridden and then ultimately even suicidal. Wow. There's a good ending here, but um, it was that process of watching this guy who, you know, he did all the right things through no fault of his own. He lost his health. And what ultimately through this pretty brilliant endocrinologist, he found out that he had mercury in his brain cells. And uh, he had had some, the, the, the endocrinologist, once they figured it out, he said, did you have any dental work done around the time you first started noticing your symptoms? Well, he kept a training diary. He went back and looked at his uh, training diary. And sure enough, two days after he had some silver fillings removed, he had his first symptoms. Well, you know, he, all the things that he was trying, the things that we did, right, all of the supplements we took, changes in the diet, none of it was having any impact because the one thing that was damaging him health-wise was mercury trapped in his neurons. And it wasn't until he got that out. And then we started to get into this whole, what is detox? And really, what are we talking about from a health perspective? It's our cells, right? So that's, that's what led to this. It's incredible because that's not the first time you hear where everyone's doing the right things as far as exercise and eating, movement, training, even handling their stress. But there's a whole nother aspect. It's the things that are 
in the home or things that are in our mouth, things that we aren't removing so the body can heal itself, right? We can give the body everything it needs, but the removal is just as important. And I think a lot of even experts, practitioners, they overlook that. Um, so I love that you mentioned it wasn't until the dental amalgams were removed, the body was starting to heal. Um, and, and did he get better over time? Yeah, he did. Uh, it, it was another four year process after that, but it was, you know, learning how to properly detox this stuff from his brain cells. Um, but there's a, there's a side story there where he had a, 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 his, a seven, two seven year old twins, a boy and a girl, they wound up adopting because their parents tragically died. They were the godparents. They took them in. And this boy, uh, Dylan, had uh, he was on the autism spectrum, right? And the doctor said, "Well, he's never going to be normal. He's always." He said that his mother told Dan, my friend, that he was vaccinated and he wound up having all of these issues from that point, and he was progressively getting worse. And the doctor said look, he's never going to go to regular school. He's never going to be off medications. And Dan was like, I don't accept that, right? I see what happened to me in my brain and started Dylan on the same cellular approach. And today, uh, the guy's 22 years old. You'd never know he had a single problem. Yeah, so it, wow. it, was, it was those things that really impacted me and made me realize that we're, we're facing a tsunami. Like we are having these, this approach our shores right now. And I, it's just so frightening to realize what we are doing to ourselves and you know that was just the beginning of it for me yeah and, and and sometimes it just takes one patient to completely shift everything and i'm so happy that you were receptive to it and then took the steps to go okay now now i i'm approaching healing from a different way and um you mentioned a tsunami what the heck is a tsunami though what what's what's in that in that tidal wave coming yeah, I think so much of it is what we're seeing toxicity wise. You know, we, we have a lot of these health issues today. Something is like Alzheimer's, right? 120 years ago, unheard of in our society. And today it's one of our fastest growing issues. And uh, you're talking, I talked about autism, right? And when I graduated, Doc, it was one in 10,000 children. And today it's like, by some estimates, it's one in 50 or even more, right? Now, how's that happening? You know, it's the things we're being exposed to. No doubt that the diet and all of these other things, stress comes in different forms, physical, chemical, and emotional. And there's no doubt that as Americans, especially that we're doing a lot of things that are damaging us from that cellular building block level, but toxins, I think we have to take a look at that and realize that we're swimming in a sea of toxins and they're playing an ever increasing role in terms of our poor health. Yeah. And, and I think that people are, so adamant and going, no, I'm protected by these big government regulatory bodies saying, no, you know, we're going to look at this chemical and go, no, 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 this is not safe. Look at this chemical. Okay, it's safe. That's not the case at all. It's like a big open door policy, innocent till proven guilty type situation where, okay, now we're being exposed, not only in our home, yes, in the food, but everywhere, everywhere on our, on our and makeup and lotions. And I, I think I, I was thinking about this the other day. A lot of people don't put the stress on it because they don't have the acute symptoms, right? It's just like a little drop in the bucket over time. And then they're, they're not how they were five years ago. And they go, wait, I feel like I was much better five years ago. I don't have the energy that I used to. I'm not sleeping right. My appetite's different. I've got issues. And we, don't, we never really connect the slow drip, right? Because we think, oh, what is the big, you know, the big thing that's filling the bucket and overflowing it? Um, would you agree that it's sort of like a slow process where people are slowly getting sick, forgetting what it feels good to be healthy? For sure. Uh, the, the, the story with my friend, his was, was more aggressive than that. But he, even today, he talks about us having all different size buckets, right? And uh, whatever he was doing before was filling up his bucket. And then when that dentist took those silver fillings out the wrong way, that tipped his bucket. And, and we see yeah. that. I, my, the analogy I use is, you know, I could have a pond in my backyard and I've got fish in there that I love and I've got the plant life that I like to look at. I can come along and I can throw a glass of chemical, you know, toxins into there and it, through the natural cleansing mechanism, which that pond has and we have, um, probably no ill effect. But if I do that every day, right, if I'm doing that every day, at what point are the fish going to start to suffer? At what point are the plants going to start to wilt? And I just think, I don't think we think about it like that, but we do bioaccumulate. We are take these, a lot of these toxins are fat soluble, meaning they are, they're, they're attracted to areas in our body where there's fat. 
Our brain is 60% fat. Well, that stuff builds up over time. And in the beginning, like, here's what I say, like you don't find people that are healthy as a horse on Sunday and then Monday they're riddled with disease, right? It's a progression over time. We go from function to dysfunction, ultimately may, maybe manifesting in disease, but it is that progression. And you're right. A lot of times people are just not correlating the fact that the, the, the little things that they're seeing, the changes that they're experiencing are all tied into this central thing toxicity exactly and the, and the human organism is so adaptable that we we're so resilient and adaptable that we don't know how we felt five years ago we just go oh this is my energy now you know but but sometimes we forget what like full health feels like um and i love i love that we're talking about the toxicity aspect i mean like environmental toxins is something i'm it's one of the major pillars i'm passionate about and putting out there um so what when, when we're overwhelmed with toxins, let's say that pond is overwhelmed with some of those chemicals that you're throwing in there, what is happening to our cells in particular? Yeah, well, we're driving inflammation. I think that's a, an easy way to understand it, that we have um, a cell membrane, right, that we know today is basically the brains of the cell. That's how our cells communicate with each other. That's how the good stuff gets in, like hormones and nutrients and oxygen. It's how the bad stuff like, like uh, waste or chemicals get out. Like when we make energy, we make waste, right? I, the analogy I use is that you can burn a, a, a log in your fireplace and you, you release heat, that's energy. We want that, but we also make smoke and that smoke has better go out the chimney. If it's coming back into the house, that's not a good thing. We can die from smoke inhalation. A lot of people are not able to get the waste products out. It's building up in their cells and it's creating a lot of internal cellular issues, maybe affecting their ability to produce energy at the mitochondria, your energy factories, maybe turning on bad genes. Uh, we know that with epigenetics today. Uh, by and large though, being fat soluble, they're gonna get into that cell membrane which is made of fat, two layers of fat called a bilipid layer. And then it's just gonna drive inflammation constantly. And that inflammation is really the beginning of disease. And I think that's, that's well understood with science today. Yeah, yeah. And it's something that when your son came here, we spoke about at length about the inflammatory spectrum and the aspect of what's happening to our cells. So I love the point that you made. You keep driving in fat soluble, fat soluble. Yeah, because there's toxins that we pee out, but there's many toxins that have an affinity for things like the brain, like our fat tissue, and we hold it in over time. And, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily argue, but I definitely go into like conversations with people who are like, no, the, the, you know, the dose makes the poison. Right. And I'm like that. What, what are we in the 80s? Like this is we, or we have to think about bio. Are you not thinking about bioaccumulation? We have to consider that because we can. And, and I, I was thinking about the other day. People maybe who tend to have issues, and you may agree with me, losing weight, you know, we think about the body's intelligence. What if they're just super toxic and it's in their fat cells and the body's going, okay, let me, we'll release, we'll, 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 we'll burn some fat, but very slowly because you're toxic, right? It's all that bioaccumulation over the years. I, it's just a thought that I had, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, we, we talk about weight loss resistance. Like if you give me somebody who's weight loss resistant, I'm going to automatically think toxins because yes, know, first yes. of all, you're talking about the hypothalamus, the middle of your brain, which is your control tower for your hormones has an affinity for these, uh, these neurotoxins, these heavy metals, for instance. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to mess up everything from that point down. But we also know that, you know, that a lot of these things are like uh, they're mimicking hormones like estrogen in the body. And they're, they're creating the, this environment where, um, the fat burning hormones, uh, leptin and testosterone and uh, thyroid, they can't get into the cell to do their job. And uh, there's just so many components to it, right? We're, we're talking about the mitochondria. If somebody is locked in sugar burning mode, right? Because they've gotten really bad at burning fat and there's, that's a whole different story. Uh, that's gonna be part of this whole weight loss thing too, but it's, it's intimately related to this uh, toxicity issue that we're seeing today. Can I, a uh, real quick story there. My brother and I used yeah. to own a gym. And when I, when I first got out of practice, it was a Gold's gym in, uh, in my hometown. And this was back in the late 80s or mid to late 80s. And 
we would have people come in and they wanted to lose weight and we would just simply clean up their diet a little bit, put them on a moderate exercise program, and then, you know, easy weight loss. I mean, predictable right. weight loss. Something changed. Something in the 90s, I don't know whether it was, was, was with the introduction of glyphosate or what, but something in the late 90s, early 2000s, it dramatically changed. And now we had all of these, at first it was women, it's more and more men too today, but almost in the beginning, exclusively women, that no matter how little they ate, no matter how much they exercised, they simply had lost the ability to burn fat for fuel. And weight loss was impossible for them. Yeah. Wow. It, 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 and how many times uh, when I was in practice, I had people going, yeah, doc, I can't lose weight. Uh, I, have, I have weight loss resistance. I don't, I, I mean, I'm, I was with a trainer. I'm eating way less calories and I'm working out a lot. I don't understand. And to me, it's like, whoa, one of the first things I thought is this, th th I'm thinking about a particular patient. I go, this woman's inflamed through the board. And then I take the, I, I, I give her a full panel and we see every single inflammatory marker through the roof. Right. And it's not like she wasn't eating unhealthy. Right. She was eating good food, good quality food. I go, there's a whole nother aspect that your trainer wasn't talking about. Your dietitian wasn't talking about. There's so much more to it. And I, I, I believe it. I mean, I've, you know, I was born in the 80s, so I didn't I didn't see that whole process where people can just uh, like it should be eat and work out and lose weight. Now there's this all this resistance and, and, and the advent of, like you said, maybe glyphosate. But there's so many other chemicals that have just been let in the door since the 90s. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Clear though, Doc, I was only five years old in the 80s. I was just really smart. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. But exactly. You know, great. God's observe, observing it in, at, and owning a gym at five, too, on top of that. Exactly. I was ahead of the curve. No, but you, you couldn't be more right. And it's getting worse. I think that's the thing today is that, that we were not really appreciating that this tsunami, if, if, we, if, if I can, uh, I think it's just coming ashore right now. The things that we are seeing with children today, it's horrifying when we're realizing that this is not affecting just adults, but it's starting to affect children at a really young age in terms of their health yeah. and their hormones. Yeah. I'm in full agreement. And, and, and we, I saw, man, I, when I was doing the pediatrics um, rotation in school, it was like every other kid had their, who, who presented had autism, ADHD, some other cognitive disorder. You know, and you would think in the past, it's like, oh, they're just eating a lot of sugar and maybe, maybe even the food dies. But we take that out and they're still very much so hyper aggressive. Uh, they can't pay attention. And I'm like, what is going on? And we weren't even really talking about toxins enough back then. But you think about something like heavy metal, right? I, I heard a quote, the, one of the best ways to detox heavy metal from, from mom is to get pregnant, right? Go straight to the baby. And it's incredible that, you know, babies are born and we, they, they took the, the, the cord blood and they saw over 200 different toxins. Babies are born in a toxic world. It's incredible. Yeah, we know that, uh, for instance, lead, you know, my great grandmother, my grandmother, they were exposed to a lot of lead in paint in, our, in the gasoline, right? It was, it was pretty endemic. It can be passed down four generations, you know, from mother, mother to daughter. So, you know, you, you could, we could literally be, have these accumulations from generations past which is incredible to hear right like it's just continuously just going to generation generation but then you, when when you were i was thinking when you were saying we have the cell it's inflamed there's toxins in the in the bilayer why have you have you seen in your client base some people yeah okay they're toxic but they're super resilient other people they're super sensitive and they're, they're having symptoms really quickly. What have you found? What is the difference? How come some people are way more resilient and some people are not? Yeah, I, I always say that we are truly as different on the inside as we are on the outside. And my example is always, you know, we, we, most of us have heard or seen of the 90-year-old guy who smokes packs of cigarettes every day, right. you know, totally abuses his body, never goes to a doctor and lives in full health. And then you'll get people that, We'll get cancer from secondhand smoke, right? We're all different. And, you know, how big are our buckets? You know, some people have gigantic buckets and they're, they're only partially filled. And then other people have small buckets and they're already at the top. And any little insult sends them over the edge. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've seen that too. And, and I think a lot of the time those buckets, 
correlate in many in many ways with stress too like the the more stressed you are i see that people all of a sudden had a bucket and they have a shot glass like stress is that much of a role for that i've seen and it's like whoa you were super resilient you know you had a death in the family uh you lost your job and then all of a sudden like that resiliency went from big you know 80 80 gallon bucket to like like i said a shot glass it's it's incredible because that's when you see things break yeah, the the uh, the people that I've seen over the years that say that would say like, ever since I got divorced or ever since my dad died, my health has never been the right. same. Right, it's that thing. Right. That, yeah, no doubt. And 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 we gotta. I think everyone has to understand that stress is is not just emotional. Like most of the time, we're thinking when we hear the word stress, it's emotional stress, but it could be physical stress. Right. It can be chemical stress, right? And the body doesn't really differentiate. Stress is stress. And our, and our limits with stress are going to be different with, with every person. Right. And I love that you said the chemical part of it, the chemical stress, the toxins that we're exposed to. We don't think about our bodies being stressed to that. You know, we could go to the gym, be exhausted and you go, oh, I guess my body's kind of stressed. I'm sore. And we certainly know about emotional stress. But I think the chemical stress is the next talking point for a lot of us practitioners to really just put out there and go, yeah, there's chemical stress and you're exposed and your bucket's filling up. And I don't know how big your bucket is, but at one point, at some point it's going to overflow. Yeah. And why, why, why is no. it, you know, why is it that we are doing all of these other things, which I'm a giant proponent for exercise and eating, right? That's, that's part of our program. Yeah. Um, but why is it that we're doing these things and we're continuing to see people get worse? You know, it's because like my friend, he did all of those things, doc. He did every diet. He did every supplement. He went to every doctor he could think of, test after test. The one thing that was being missed was neurotoxicity, mercury in his brain cell. And he right, could right. not, not only could he not get his health back, he watched himself go downhill for four years. Which must have been terrifying. He's so athletic. He's like, he's doing all the right things. He's like, what is happening? And we, no one can tell me. I know a lot of people can identify with that. He was ready to give up because, uh, you know, not, everything that he thought he knew would work. None of it worked. Okay. So there's a lot of people viewing and listening and they're going to go, they're going to go, okay, well, I, I, Dr. G, Dr. Cole have talked about toxins, think we need to remove them. Uh, I, I, I hope from this side, I've done a good job of telling people wh where, where to find them. How do we optimize our body? What are the things we need to do to improve our detoxification mechanisms, our resiliency? What are, what are the things that you tell some of the clients so we can be empowered to learn? Well, I think we teach something called the five R's of cellular healing. We have to first understand, I think, just from a building block perspective, that we're made of cells. Every tissue, every organ, every gland made of cells, right? So they are the truest reflection of our health. You're, you're never going to find somebody who is perfectly healthy, who's riddled with sick, weak, damaged, dysfunctional cells. So we've got to understand that. And what I try to get people to understand is that they're like bricks in a building. The difference is that our bricks, our cells, they're alive, right? So because they are alive, they're the smallest living part of each of us, that's where all function in the human body comes from. So if a person is sitting out there and they're like, I have a dysfunction, I have a symptom, or maybe they've been even tagged with a disease, it's always traceable back to something gone wrong at that cellular level, right? So we have to understand that in particular. We don't want to just change numbers on a piece of paper, like a test result. That's not in necessarily indicative of a better health, not even feeling better because you can take something to get rid of your symptoms, but that's not really addressing the reason why you had those symptoms. My point is it's traceable back to that cell. So if we understand that concept, but then from there, we teach this five R's of cellular healing. R number one is we have to remove the source right? We cannot be continually exposing ourselves to these toxins and think that we're, we're detoxing effectively, you know, garbage in, garbage out. We've got to be able to move this stuff out of us at the same time. And it may be gradual, but gradually start to reduce the load, the exposure to these different things. And because we have this self-healing mechanism, this body that uh, God gave us that is amazing when it comes to healing, uh, we have that in our corner. I, I think that's the most, that's something we don't hardly ever hear about. But this doctor right. who's on call, right? He's on call 24 hours a day, or she, if you're a female. But uh, yeah, I mean, always on call, always knows what we need. We just need to stop 
putting things in. We need to create an environment that's supportive of health, an anti-inflammatory environment, right? So that's the key. If we just stop doing the stuff that's hurting us, create an environment that supports health, and then rely on we get what we have from the beginning, which is a body that knows how to heal. Yeah, that self-healing intelligence is, <laughs> it's something that like, so many of us doctors and scientists think we know better than the body, but the body, man, it knows exactly what to do so long as you give it what it needs and remove that crap that is blocking it from healing. 37 years and I can tell you, I still feel like I know nothing because uh, yeah. you know, it, no matter how much I know, it always still goes, goes back to what the body is attempting to do. Right, right. Okay, so we got one R. What, what are some of the other R's? Number two is we have to regenerate the membrane, right? So it's that cell membrane that becomes damaged primarily. And it can be, it can be intracellular too. You can have the mitochondrial membrane that's damaged, right? Around our energy factories. Mm -hmm. Or number three is we have to restore energy. We have so many sick people that the idea of, for instance, I use this analogy, if they come home and the idea of them having to go to Planet Fitness for an hour and I, they come home after work, right? And go exercise or cook a big meal or clean their house. It's like, it's not even on their radar because they're just that sick. They don't have the energy to do that kind right. of stuff. Well, if they don't have the energy to do that, where does their energy come from to heal? It's, it's just not there, right? So we've got to restore that energy. Uh, our number four is we've got to reduce inflammation. We've got to stop throwing yeah. gasoline on yeah. a fire. And that's the key. So many people unwittingly every day, they're throwing gas on a fire. They can't figure out why the, the good diet that they're consuming, the supplements they're, they're taking, it's not working for them because they're unwittingly driving inflammation daily. And then our number five is we have to reestablish methylation. A little bit more complicated, but we have these methyl groups that our body needs to be able to detoxify, to be able to create energy and be able to heal. But a lot of sick people, they're deficient in these carbon hydrogen groups, these methyl groups. And so they can't get better. So we have to we have to reestablish that methylation. Awesome. Five up man, that that is like directly and that resonates with me because everything makes such sense when it comes to detoxification. Because you're thinking from the cellular, cellular, cellular level. A lot of us and, and great, like there's there's programs which target, you know, okay, help us poop. Great. All right. Uh, and drink a lot of water and eat these foods and you're detoxing and we can do that and sweat but but we really have to think from the cellular structures that's the first thing we people think of detoxes as like the liver cleanses the colon cleanses things like that and they're right. absolutely beneficial right sweating is so beneficial and and the you know the infrared sauna and the enemas and things like that are, are very helpful but I always say that you can have the cleanest colon in the world if your brain cells are toxic, you're in trouble, right? So we, we've right, got to get right. further up, upstream to where these health issues begin, and then hopefully we can see them end. Powerful stuff. And what role does then the health, overall health of your gut play in this whole process? Uh, more and more we know about that, right? Like there, there's even this gut-brain connection over the, the vagus nerve, the longest nerve in our body. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, so much of what we're seeing today with these brain diseases have to do with the health of our gut. M most of our immune system is in our gut. And if you give me somebody who's spent a lifetime being exposed to insecticides and pesticides and things like glyphosate, chlorine in our water, antibiotics right. in our food, antibiotics in our medicine, how about the last year and a half? Like how many people have been dousing themselves in antibacterial soap? The, all of these things that are designed... Right. Right, they're killing living things. Well, guess what? When, we, when they get in our body, they kill living things. And that means our good bacteria. And so we wind up with this imbalance between good and bad bacteria. That's gonna drive more inflammation in the body. And in, in again, again, because all disease basically begins as inflammation, we're setting the stage for disease when we have an unhealthy right. gut. Right, right, exactly. That's the best way to put it setting the stage for disease our gut is so much in many ways protecting we don't even know to what extent yet because we're still learning more about it but i love that you talked about the brain gut connection how many people have are bloated uh have heartburn feel just feel terrible with their gut they just feel really icky and then all of a sudden they go uh i kind of i'm kind of in the bad mood too like i don't feel good i don't feel energized i feel groggy i feel brain fog 
and they had you know nine hours of sleep they feel great they, they slept how they should they're not feeling great and and a lot of us don't think about the connection between the gut and the brain and um how many and that's for me like i 100 i'm super sensitive if my gut is feeling good i'm clear as i'm creative i'm ready to go but the minute it's not i'm like oh man today is like a, i'll yeah. tell you doc and I, and it works in reverse too you know this that um my buddy that, that i'm telling you about when he never had gut problems, like never had any gut issues. But when his brain got became toxic, now all of a sudden he couldn't eat certain foods and he would bloat all the time, wow. right? So it's not just the gut up, it, it's the brain down too. I love that. Um, is there, I, I, I know we covered a lot actually, <laughs> the detoxification, weight loss, some gut health stuff. Is there anything else that you're passionate that you want to really say before we wrap this up? Um, I know that you're doing a lot of stuff, but just something that we maybe we didn't even cover that's really important to you. I, I think the foods are, I mean, we I have kind of glossed over that because we, we, we were focusing on the toxins, but we're telling people, you know, the people that we work with that, look, the, the truth is you're, you're probably, ne if you're not well, you're probably not going to get your health back unless you're willing to change your diet, right? The, the issue today, though, is that there's so many people, they're not going to get their health back if all they do is change their diet. But there's no doubt, there's no doubt that the diet is such an important part of uh, our health, right? The foods that we eat. So yeah. following a whole food diet, getting away from all of the sugar consumption. I tell my clients yeah. in 1900, it was 100 I mean, it was 10 pounds of processed sugar per family per year, it's estimated. Today, it's 152 pounds per person, right? And that's not even wow. from the sugar jar, man. That's from the stuff that, that we're buying in the store. And, uh, and then the bad fats, the vegetable oil, the corn oil, the canola oil, the trans fats, the hydrogenated oils, these things are horrible for your health. And they're driving so much disease, so much diabetes, that you know, they're contributing to this inflammatory state in the body things like cancer, even there's no doubt, like overconsumption of these refined carbohydrates can be linked to that. So yeah, I, I would be remiss if we didn't uh, end this with understanding that, you know, we've got to be focusing on those fundamentals like the diet too. I love that. Thank you for saying that. Um, super important. I mean, like it, it's one of the first like barriers to entry for health that people are like, oh no, I, I've been eating this way. I don't, I don't want to change. Diet is like in many ways, religion for people. So I know you've seen it in your practice. People are like, no, no, no. I'm like, I can't change that. I gotta, I can't stop eating that. But um, it's so important. So, so important. Um, all right. So where, where can everyone find you if, you know, if they want to reach you, if they want to work with you, um, just some information for you. Yeah. So Facebook and Instagram, they can just look up Dr. Bill Cole and then they can, or they can go to my website, drbillcole.com. Easy enough. Okay. Perfect. Easy enough. Any, any projects coming up or anything that we need to know about? We ha we do have uh, our, my staff is actually putting out a cookbook right now called mastering the art of AIP cooking 86 cellular healing recipes uh, with an AIP lifestyle guide. Uh, we do use autoimmune protocol in the beginning with a lot of our clients mm -hmm. before we switch them over to a more general, more paleo type of an existence. But yeah, that's something that's in the works right now. I'm looking forward to that. I have just a client that I can think of who can use that. So uh, as soon as it's out, send it over my way because she'll really benefit. Um, thank you so much, man. Thank you for joining. Like really everything you talk about is in such alignment with what we talk about here. And it's just hearing it from you and really focusing on the cell, inflammation, diet, everything as a whole, holistically, as it should be, not just putting a microscope. Um, the work you're doing is amazing. And um, and you and your son, awesome stuff. Awesome I can, stuff. I, I can oh, say the you. same to you, Doc. I really appreciate what you do, man. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you for joining and maybe uh, you come back in the near future. I'd love to. All right, thank you. Awesome show with Dr. Bill Cole. I told you he is a wealth of knowledge. Really inspiring to hear a doctor of 37 years talking about the stuff that is just getting hot in the past five. So uh, make sure you're following those R's. Find a doctor, a naturopathic or functional doctor who can support you, support your detoxification, keep you at your best health that you deserve. Thank you for rating, reviewing, subscribing, and showing up and seeing you.